Parity errors have always been annoying for the speedcubers, but they always found a way around it. For example, in square 1, many top speedcubers switch to CSP, a method to avoid parity in square 1. In this video, you'll learn how to avoid another annoying parity, the Ola parity in 4x4, and every big cube beyond that. The way you detect if you have even or odd parity is by blind tracing the wings of the puzzle. I'm not going to go over it completely in this video, because there's plenty of resources on blind tracing. I'll link some of these in the description. During inspection, you'll need to count the number of wings traced, just like CSP. At the end, if you get an even number, you have even parity, and if you get an odd number, you have odd parity. If the cube has even parity, you'll have to solve it with an even number of inner quarter turns. If it has odd parity, you'll need to solve it with an odd number of inner quarter turns. Inner quarter turns are moves like RW and RW prime. Any outer turns will not affect this rule in any way. Now, the problem is solving the cube in an even or odd number of inner quarter turns. There are a lot of tricks to make this much easier. First off, the general rule is that after you build two adjacent centers, the parity state of the cube will not be changed for the rest of the solve. Knowing this, your job is just to solve two adjacent centers into an even state of parity. There are three main methods for getting the cube into this state. The first method is just to solve the cube normally, and keep track of the parity state of the cube, and somehow, get it into an even parity state once two adjacent centers are solved. While this is the most efficient, it takes much more thinking than the other two methods. The other two methods use moves that preserve the parity of the cube. The three main preserving moves are using outer layer moves, using double turns, and using trigger type moves like these. Trigger moves do not include moves that move an inner layer between the two moves. If a cube has even parity, you would only use a combination of these preserving moves until you solve two adjacent centers. If you have odd parity, you would have two options. The first is to do one random inner quarter turn to get into an even parity state. From here, you can just solve it normally. The second option is to keep the cube in an odd parity state by using only preserving moves until you're almost done with two adjacent centers. At the end, do one inner quarter turn to get it into an even parity state. The final method is simply to combine the first two, using mostly preserving moves but using some regular moves to make sure the solve isn't too inefficient. This will probably be the most ideal method for most people. There are several reduction methods in 4x4, and not all of them solve two adjacent centers as a first step. So I'll go over the main methods and how to apply these ideas. For classic reduction and Hoya users, there are two options. One is just to solve two adjacent centers and continue with the solve. However, if you still want to solve two opposite centers first, Remember that you need to get the puzzle into an even state with two adjacent centers. In other words, solve the first three centers into an even state. For Yao, this is probably the most difficult. Before solving two adjacent centers, you'll need to make two opposite centers and then make three cross edges. This will be even worse if you use half centers. The key must be in an even state after all these steps. I actually used neither of these methods, but rather a method that came up with myself. If you want to see a video I made on it, check out the link in the description. The basic idea is to solve the cross and centers like Koya or Yao, but by first solving a center and building around it using F3L techniques. The reason I use this is because all you need to do is make one center and the rest is just trigger moves. This means all you need to do is solve one center into an even state of parity and the rest takes no thinking. This might not be the best method, but I get normal times on it, and it works really well for avoiding parity.
Since this is a lot to take in, I'll do an example trace and example solves for each of the methods to clear everything up. Alright, first we'll do a 4 blind example trace. So I use blue top, red front, so if you guys want to follow along. Um, let's get started. I'll start from here. Come up here, we get 1, 2, 3, 4. And then here, come here 5, 6, and then 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, uh, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, goes back to original place so break into here 19 20 21 uh, and then 22 23 24 and that should be it so, so we have even verity all right now I'm gonna do some um, example solves of solving so first off I'll do the two adjacent centers and I'm just gonna pretend we have even parity here so first off, um, I guess there's a few bars here we can connect and try to get something done. So let's actually do blue. So to solve this, we have to do this outer move to bring us here. So these are ready to connect and outer moves don't do anything, so it's fine. Uh, we want to preserve parity, so if you move this up and then over up, this is kind of like a double move, but in between we do... Um, an outer move so this ch doesn't change the parity so that's good and they also do right now because it's pretty simple uh, we can insert this like this and then we'll insert it like normal since those are both trigger moves we didn't change parity at all so right now we're at the even state and we can move on and solve the rest of the cube Okay, I'm going to do another example, but this time we're going to do opposite centers. So, uh, I see all red and blue here, pretty nice. So, let's actually do red. So, move this to the bottom here and set these up. And again, we'll do this technique. It's like a double move, but we're going to move an outer layer in between. These are lined up. Um, I'll just insert this first, so just like that. And then insert this. Now we have to remember to do one more center before we can continue. Uh, so let's just do blue. So do a double move to insert that. And a trigger move to solve the center. And now we have three centers solved, two adjacent, which means parity can't be changed. And we only use trigger moves or uh, any preservation moves are fine. And we should get no parity. All right, so let's do some Yao examples. So for these, I'll just pretend we have odd parity. So um, for here, it'll make sense to just, uh, we're doing white by the way. So it'll make sense to do a double move to insert this. And we use a single move, change the parity. So now it's even. And we we'll always preserve the even parity during the rest of the first part of the, um, the solve. Um, I guess we insert these two. Uh, we got this and this. We're gonna do a double move. Insert this. And now on the back, I already saw this edge. So we'll have that. And uh, here. Here's an, a case. So we got these two. So what I will do here is do this. A double move to solve it. And again, we see another edge here. We'll just do a double inner layer move. And insert that so we got these pieces done and it's still in the even state which is good and we just do one center and I guess we can just do red so we got the spawn in the back we'll do like a double move but with a single in between and that's good for the last one again we have odd parity and I'm just gonna leave the parity chain move at the end and I'm also gonna do half centers for this one so we have this and this, and we'll insert this with a trigger move, so that should preserve parity. 
Uh, let's just insert this piece first. And we got these two. Insert. Insert. So we still have odd parity, which is what we want. Um, these two pieces, double move, we're fine. Uh, let's see. We got these two. Uh, I'll prefer to do a trigger move just to preserve parity. It's an extra move, but just to keep it um, easy. We have the last two here. We'll do a trigger move to solve it. Uh, for half centers, um, let's do blue first. And then red. And then green. So all those were trigger moves. And I just, um, what I saw was these two. So I'll insert this. And then a double move. Um, but we do remember actually that we have odd parry right now. So we're gonna do one extra move. And then do a double move to insert it. And now we should solve like normal and we should be fine. So lastly, I'll do an example solve with my method. And I'll be doing a white center and pretend it has odd parity. So for this case, uh, I can pair these together with one move. So now we have even parity. Insert here with one move. Now we have odd parity. And switch it back to even with one random move. So we have a lot of things here actually. I see red's actually really nice, so I'll do red first. Keep in mind that the rest of these moves are gonna be trigger moves, so the parties will not be switched. So yeah. Uh get this pair together, insert. We have this nice blue block here. So um I guess we can just get this block together and Insert this here. Take this out. Insert these two. We can solve the orange like that. Take it out. Insert these. And insert these. Lastly, we have a few more just for the green. Let's use these to insert. And then lastly we have this bar and this wing and we can just insert everything and we're done. Lastly, I want to quickly cover how to do this on cubes above 4x4. For 5x5, it's very similar and you just trace these wings. The same idea is followed and every inner quarter turn switches the parity state. The outer and middle layers do not change anything. For 6x6, you have two sets of wings to trace, the inner and the outer ones, so it's the same idea. It's important to know that these parity states are independent from each other. An inner quarter turn of this layer will change its parity state, and an inner quarter turn of this layer will change its parity state. The rules are the same with 7x7 and beyond. All out parity avoidance is an extremely hard method to actually get good at, but the result is well worth it in my opinion. To my knowledge, none of the world-class solvers use this method in their solves, due to its complexity, with the long inspection time and a lot of thinking during the first portion of the solve. However, I do believe that, just like CSP, this will eventually become the future of 4x4, and maybe some other big cubes. If you have any questions on this method, feel free to leave them in the comments below. That's it for this video, thanks for watching.